This video is going to be full of all kinds of ink. Many of you may have heard of the stationery store Itoya, and their main store, or Honten, is in Ginza. And it's like 12 floors of stationery spread out between two buildings. This is their selection of friction pilot pens, and this is their colored pencils. And this is some more colored pencils. And for you manga artists, these are all Copic markers. After a two year absence, their fountain pen ink show called Ink, Ink, Ink was held again this past week. I'll take you on a quick tour, show you some ink and talk a little bit about the fountain pen ink scene here in Japan. You had to make reservations ahead of time and the show was held down into their basement. When you checked in, you got to pick one of these dip pens. I picked the aqua one, and it's basically Pilot's new Iro Utsushi, which is a dip pen. You can see the writing just slightly here, and also it has the logo ink, ink, ink on it. I'll link to a Fuda fan Instagram post about this pen. This dip pen is basically a plastic handle with a Pilot Kakuno nib jammed into it. On the right is a Pilot Kakuno nib with the feed, and as you can see, this one on the left doesn't have a feed. One of the rules was that you were only allowed to use this dip pen to test out the inks. I think it was more for a contamination issue since they gave you a brand new pen. This was the real deal because this pen, when you buy it in the store, is about 800 yen, and the entrance fee for this show was 1,000 yen, or about $7.50 USD, which paid for a two and a half hour time block. You also got a packet of tissues, which showed you how to use your dip pen. Just dip in the tip and not dip it all the way in. And then it also tells you between ink testing, you need to rinse it off in the glasses of water that are provided and then dry it off with the tissue with the tissues from that tissue pack. And then you were given a re-entry ticket. There were only 55 people allowed in during your two and a half hour block. And then you were given a catalog of all the inks that were there, which were over a thousand inks from 45 different companies. And there was a little legend for the insignia differentiating between, say, dye-based and pigment-based inks and glitter inks and things like that. And you also got a little ink booklet that was actually made by Kobeha, who are the people that make Graffilo paper. And you can use this little ink book to test out all the inks or bring your own ink book. I've been to a lot of ink shows, but I've never seen one like this one. The other ink shows are mainly to sell you ink, but many people brought their own ink books and basically just tested all these inks and never bought anything. Of course, they're there to sell you ink and most people did buy ink, but some people just came to test the different kinds of ink. Here's some of the Diatramentus lineup and they, along with Sailor, had some of the biggest selection. When you go to other ink shows, much like a pen show, it's very lively and kind of noisy and you people are talking all over the place. This was completely different. Here is a unedited just sound of what it was like there inside the room. You'll notice that most of my clips don't have any close-ups of anyone and you really weren't supposed to film in there, but I acted like a dumb tourist, which actually worked out really well because many people were eager to talk to me. Here you can see Kala's tribute to neon ink really just pops on these shelves. So I spent most of my time there at the ink show just having these little whispered conversations with all the salespeople and many of the customers. I frequently embarrass my friends by having conversations with random people. Nagasawa had an enormous showing of ink. And according to the sales lady, the sailor's Yurameku line of chromo shading inks was the most popular. I'll link to my video about them. There were three rows of shelves with four levels. 
the ink sample models were placed down the center of the top shelf so you had enough room to lay your notebook down and test out the inks. The end of each top shelf had a glass of water to clean your pen and then another row of sample bottles and then the bottom two rows were for buying and then you had a trash bin. Most of the sample bottles were taped down so you couldn't move them. There was well over a thousand different bottles of ink that you could sample, but some of the bottles were sample only. They didn't sell boxes of those ink. But most of the ink you could buy, and the boxes for those ink were on the bottom two shelves, and then they kind of had plastic covering over it to ostensibly protect those boxes from stray ink. They even covered the lower half of the walls. And they had a workstation where the salespeople had changed out the water and then threw out the uh, dirty water underneath the table. There was a heavy representation of inks from the West to include J. Urban, and these looked really nice, all kind of lined up. And there were also bottles from Visconti, Waterman, Waldman, Aurora, Diplomat, Faber-Castell, Caveco, Lamy, Montegrappa, Monteverde, Pelican, Roar and & Klingner, and Signum. And the wildly popular Ferris Wheel Press was there, along with Penider. And Parker had several bottles of ink, but what was interesting was this little bottle of ink. I've never seen one this small from Parker. It's a 30 milliliter bottle of Quink Green Jade ink for 770 yen, which is about $5.50 USD. And an ink I had not heard of before the Osaka Pen Show was Inkebara. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And it's a dye based ink um, made in the Czech Republic. And of course, there was a slew of ink from Asia. Here's Venta ink in their iconic dark bottles. And IWI ink, or I'm not sure if it's called Iwi ink, which is based out of Taiwan and imported by Interact, but yet I think it's made in Slovenia. Here on the label you can see where it says design by IWI. We do live in a global ink world imported to Japan from Taiwan, made in Slovenia. They had a lot of limited edition and show exclusive inks. I kind of got limited editioned out. This one is called Wine Aging Red, and it is suspiciously in one of the new platinum kind of sideways bottles. I'm digging way back here, but I think it's called a rhombus. And this same shape shows up in Kawasaki Bunguten's ink. This is their Ikkyaku no Koe ink. And Kawasaki Bunguten is also incredibly famous for their <laughs> crazy packaging. It always seems to involve a little bit of like Easter grass. So it seems like the Platinum Rhombus bottle was pretty popular during this show. It was basically a very dark purple. Sailor made a couple of special editions for this show, and this one is called Kononuma, which is kind of funny because it's a play on Inkunuma for the ink swamp. The problem with these bottles is that they're just kind of their normal Sailor bottle, which was kind of boring. It's a pretty green, though. A relatively new ink on the scene is Kuretake. This is their Ink Cafe Meiji Color Series, and I mainly got this because this one's called Shimbashi Ido, which basically means the color of Shimbashi, and I live really close to Shimbashi. It's going with this trend where it's a very small bottle of ink, but it's reasonably priced at about $9. I was looking for a dark, saturated red, like maybe dark cherry or dragon's blood or something like that. And oh, we couldn't find one. I had the sales lady help me out. And she was explaining that it seems like right now fashionable inks are kind of light colored. This one here is by Robert Oster and it's called No Fixed Address, which is basically an orangey red with blue glitter. RO inks had a strong showing. 
I want to address what that sales lady was saying. Here are two inks that I got, Color Traveler, which is in their Wasam Bon Oiri pastel yellow color, which is that kind of greenish color. And then Ink Labo's Hirameki ink, which is that yellow ink. These were striking to me because of just their very light color. The ink bottle lying on its side is Hiroshizuku's new ink, Hotarubi. They came out with three new inks. I'll link up to my video that I did on them. Pilot has just come out with six sets of four small bottles of their Hiroshizuku inks. They come in different um, variations and I needed some more Tsukiyo. And this one also had Hotarubi in it and I kind of like didn't like Hotarubi when I first tested it. Here's the six sets there at the show. Here's a paragraph I wrote with that yellow ink, Hirameki. It was hard to keep track of, but it is interesting looking. That Parker Jade Green ink, that's what I wrote Chris O'Barrell therein, was a little bit too blue for me, so I added a little bit of it to the yellow ink, and it came out where it was a little bit more readable, but this yellow ink might be something that's useful to add to other inks if you want to add some more yellow to it. In this paragraph is that Color Traveler Pastel Yellow Ink, and it's the same thing. It's kind of hard to read, but it is an interesting color. And this was written in Hiroshizuku Hotarubi, that new ink that I really didn't like. And now I think I really like it because it allowed you to write with a very light ink, but because it had a little bit of that kind of green in it or whatever, you could read it a lot easier. And it was a very smooth writing ink compared to the other two yellow inks. And it had some really beautiful shading. I, I think maybe Pilot knew what they were doing and I think I'm kind of eating my words. So we may see a continued trend of very light colored inks. And I'd like to wrap this up with showing how some of the different people um, filled in their ink book. This lady here was embarrassed about her handwriting, which looked perfect to me. Some chose to try to test as many inks as possible, and some wanted to only keep within one line of ink. And this one lady had her own ink book that she brought. And then another lady brought her own ink book. But if you take a closer look at it, she has three strips of paper. They're held on by washi tape, and the first strip is Graffilo paper. The second one was Takasago Premium Bank paper, and the third one was Tomoa River. It was really cool because she was giving me a big lecture on how those are the top three papers you must use, and those are my exact favorite papers. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like or a comment or a share. And now for some administrative stuff. The winner for the Hanabi Glass Pen Giveaway is 4 Pen Chant. Please contact me on Instagram and I'll give you about a week. And if I don't hear from you, I'll repick another winner. Thanks.